In this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can build an interactive and dynamic pricing page in Framer with zero code. We'll start by creating the pricing card, adding the different states, and then finally connecting it together with interactions. Let's go. Okay, so here we are inside our Framer project. And the first thing I'm gonna do is draw out my pricing card. So we'll give this a light gray background, just like so. Maybe we'll add a slight border. And let's make this a little rounder as well. And let's also add a drop shadow. Now let's also just make sure that this is centered to my canvas. And now inside here, I wanna start adding some of my content. So since it's a pricing card, we need the price. So I'm just going to set a fake price to be say $48. Let's scale this up and let's actually set some typography rules here. So we'll use the font DM Sans and we'll make this a little bit bolder. And then I want to have a comparable price as well. So we might set this comparable price to be on sale from $89. And we'll make it that we can strike that through. And then we can change the text size of this as well. So let's set this to 32 and let's clean up this one as well. So maybe we set this to be 56. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually select these two elements and then I'm gonna group them together in their own stack and we'll set the width and height to be auto. And then we'll make sure that alignment is set to the top. And we even might gray this out a little bit so it doesn't have as much hierarchy. Now inside our container frame here, which we can call our pricing card, I'm going to set the layout to be on and let's set everything to go to the very top left. Then we can add some padding, maybe a little bit more. Okay, cool. We're starting to see a little bit of shape here. Now, underneath my pricing cards here, I want to have a bunch of check boxes. So what I'll do is go to the insert menu and I'll search for icon and we'll drag in an icon library. Most icon libraries will have a tick or a check mark. So we'll just search for check and we'll size that in here. Now, I also wanna add some extra text here because this is going to be my feature list and we'll drag this next to my icon, move them together, and we'll resize this just like so. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll actually set this to be to the start, and we'll set the width of this to be auto. Now, we can call this our check item, and then what I'm actually gonna do is right click this frame and we're going to create a new stack, which is going to be the parent frame of this check item, which is going to be my check item holder, which essentially means that if I set the width of this to also be auto, so it automatically takes up as much space as it needs, then if I copy and paste this check item and if we change the layout direction to be vertical, you notice we'll get a nice sort of stack layout going on here that's pretty cleanly built. Now let's just change the width of this for now as it's going a little bit too much for my liking. And we'll change the gap here as well. Now let's also add a button in here for someone to actually check out. So we'll make this say, get started. And we'll make sure this is centered. And I'm gonna set the width to be auto, but the height to be 100%. And then what I'll do is I'll add some outer padding. Maybe 20 is a bit too much. Let's go in the middle and let's try 15. Okay, great. And let's set the background color here to be black and the text to be white. And let's move that to the bottom. Now this outer padding is a little bit too much for my liking. So we'll just reduce that a little bit. And then what I'm actually going to do is set the distribute of my pricing card here to be space between. So everything gets pushed out as much as it can. So you'll notice as I kind of drag it in or make it wider, everything is kind of going to the left and the right. And, and you'll notice it's evenly spacing itself between the pricing card. So we'll just drag this in a little bit and I still think there's a few different things my pricing card needs. So we'll actually add a title here, which we'll put above our price, which can be the name of this plan. So we might call it the basic tier and let's make this type a little nicer.
And then what I actually want to do, because I want all these elements to actually be grouped together a little bit more. What I'm going to do is actually select them all, go to add a stack. So we group them together. And then this way I can individually control the layout. So we'll change the positioning here just like so. Okay, so this is starting to look pretty good. Still pretty basic, but we can do a few more things here as well. Now, actually one of the things I wanna to do to make this a little bit more dynamic is I actually want to add the ability for someone to add add-ons to their plan. So for example, if you wanted to enable a certain feature that might cost more money, I actually want to make that interactive within my pricing card here, and therefore it changes this price. So what I'm actually going to do is draw a new frame here, and we'll just label this add-on for now. Now within here, we're gonna add some text, and we'll give it a feature name. So let's say we want to add team members. And inside this frame here, we'll set the layout to be on and the width and height to be auto for now. And since we want this to be like an on off toggle, we can design for that as well. So I'm gonna draw a new frame here. I'm gonna put it inside my add-on layer and we'll make sure the direction's set just like so. We'll get rid of this background. And then I'm just gonna design this like it's anything else in Framer. So we'll set the radius here to be as round as possible. We'll keep the height as say 20 pixels. Now the width we'll figure out in just a second because I need to mathematically do this because essentially what I wanna do is have this toggle here. So we'll have like a bit of a gray background, but inside of it, we're actually going to have a square. Now we wanna make sure the dimensions of this square are exactly one-to-one. -one. And then I'm gonna put that inside my rounded rectangle here and we'll turn layout on. And I'm gonna make it go to the start, so to the left-hand side. Now, if I make this round, so if I set the radius to also be 99, you notice we start to have something that actually kinda looks like a toggle button here. Now, I feel this circle is a little bit too big, so we're actually gonna shrink it down just a little bit to say 14 pixels in width and height. And then what I want to do is make this feel a little bit uh, more evenly spaced. So what I can actually do inside my toggle frame is I can set the width and height of this to be auto. So essentially it's catching the height of the frame, so the circle itself. And then what I can actually do is a bit of a calculation here firstly. So if the width is 14, that means I essentially want to make it that if we, our toggle is gonna go from left to right, that it's at least double that. So if we set the width of this to be at 28 pixels, so then say if I select this toggle frame, set the distribute to be ends, you'll notice how we can actually interact and set an animation between these two different states. And then I wanna go one step further and I actually wanna add some outer padding. So we'll set the padding here to be say one pixel. And you'll notice if we zoom out and preview this, this is starting to look a little nicer. Just for now, let's put this where we think it needs to go. So I actually think it needs to appear above our check items. And let's actually have two of them here. And we'll wrap these together in their own frame. So then I can control the styling just a little bit more. Okay, great, this is looking good. Let's spread everything out a little bit. And then lastly, we'll wrap the title and the price together. Okay, and size this up. And let's set the width to be 280 pixels. Okay, great, let's just preview this quickly and see how this looks. Okay, pretty cool. We've got a few different elements here, nothing super fancy, nothing that looks super great, but you know, all the functional parts are here. But as you can tell, this is still fairly static. Everything here is just made up of text and frames. So what we need to do is actually tie some of this to be components so we can actually add that interactivity. So the first thing we'll start with here is our toggle. So we're actually going to select this toggle frame. We'll right click that and we'll create this as a component, which we'll call toggle. And we'll set this first state here. So our first variant, we'll call this disabled. And then we wanna set a state so when someone clicks it, this state then becomes enabled. So we'll call this enabled. Now I can change the layout and the styling of this. So we'll set it so it goes to the right-hand side. 
and maybe the background color becomes a green as well. So what I want to do now is make it that when someone clicks this toggle, it actually goes to an out enabled state. So if we click on this disabled variant, you notice this little like power up icon here. I can just simply click and drag this to my other variants. And then you notice I can set an interaction. I'm gonna make it that when someone clicks on this interaction, it's going to go to this state here. Now, if I preview this and click, you'll notice that Frame has already done the job of actually interacting between those two states. Now, this happens automatically, but if you wanna change the transition and how it animates, inside the styling options here, you've got the ability to set that. But to be honest, I think it looks pretty good. But the only thing I need to do is make it that if I want to disable that, I can do that as well. So just like we did before, we just select the enabled frame, we find this little icon here, and then we drag it to the disabled variant. And then you'll notice when I preview this, and it's very small, but you notice I can click, it works just like expected. So let's go ahead here and make sure that's updated in both these items. Okay, cool, and let's preview this. So now I can enable and disable certain features. So let's just rename this feature here to be white labeling. And these will act as our two different add-ons. Now, I also think it would be good to create our component for our button here. So we'll just call this button. And we'll do something super simple. We'll make it that when we hover on this, the black becomes a lighter color. Okay, this is a good start, but what I actually wanna do is make it that when I turn add team members on or white labeling on one of my premium features, we wanna update the price here dynamically. So what we can actually do is select this whole pricing card and we're going to create this as a component. And essentially what I want to do is set the different states. So we'll call this first state the default state and then we'll create another variant and let's say this one is for when add team members is enabled. So we'll just enable that variant here so it's shown just like so. And then we'll call this team members enabled and let's add another state here. So when the white labeling is enabled as well. So this means we also have team members plus white labeling. And then we're gonna add one more state, which is going to be when just the white labeling is enabled and not the add team members. And we'll call this white labeling enabled. Cool, so just like everything else inside a component, I can change all of this. So let's say that when we add team members, it's going to increase the price by $20. And it's also going to change the discounted price by $20 as well. So that's gonna become $109. Then when I add say white labeling on top of that, it's going to add an extra $10. So it's gonna go from 68 to 78. And this is going to become 119. But when I just add white labeling from the initial price, it's just gonna go up $10. So we'll set that to be 58. And the price difference here is going to be 99. Okay, so we've designed all our different states here, as you can see, but again, if I preview this and click, yes, the toggle works, but nothing actually changes. So similar to how we made these toggles work, we need to do the same thing within this component and actually link things together. So we'll make it that when someone presses on this toggle, we need to set a new interaction for a transition, and we're gonna make it that it goes to add team members just like so. And then if I click on white labeling, we need to make sure that it goes to just the white labeling. So let's just preview this really quick. So I'm gonna go add team members and you'll notice it updates dynamically. Now, when I remove this, nothing happens, but we'll fix that shortly. And then when I click on white labeling, it also updates the price here as well. So essentially what we're doing here is visual prototyping and you wanna prototype all your different states together, which will then animate with component interactions. So then let's go back the other way here. Let's say I want to disable when I click on add team members again. So we'll make it that on click, we're gonna go back to the default state. 
but maybe in this state here as well, I want to enable white labeling so you can see it's already done a bit of the magic for me and it's going to transition to this extra state. But again, if I click off, it's got to go back somewhere here as well. So it literally is just a process of prototyping and going through every different possibility and state that something could possibly become. So if this is being disabled, uh, then that means it just goes back to adding the team members. And we'll just go through every one here and just make sure that we've got everything set up correctly. This might take a little bit of time, especially if you've got lots of different options you need to hide or show. Cool, so let's preview this quickly and see how it looks. So I can add my team member, I can remove a team member, I could add my team member and my white labeling. Ooh, there's a bug there, let's try to figure out that. So when I go to add my white labeling here, it's going to just the white labeling enabled state. So we need to change that to go to both. Let's try that again. So I'll add my team member and my white labeling. Great. And we just need to fix one more state. So we'll make it that when I click on this, it goes to white labeling enabled. And as you can see, this is pretty dynamic so far. It's looking pretty good. Now, if you want to get a little bit more technical, Technically, depending on the price you set, you might actually want the link of this get started button to be completely different. For example, if you have a checkout page, you might have a checkout page for $58, one for $48, and then one for $78 as well. But potentially, if this is the same link, you can't actually connect that. But you will notice in my button here, I've got no ability to set a link. And that's because we actually haven't passed a variable from this button component. So we'll click into this button component here and we'll go to link and see this little plus here, we'll click on this and we'll create that as a variable. And we'll set that to be a link that's going to open in a new tab. Now, if I go back to my pricing card component and select that button, you will notice that we can now set a link for that variant. So for example, if I wanted this to go to a Stripe checkout, I could set the link to be that. And then maybe on the $68 tier, maybe it's a, a different link and I can just import that here. And then it's the same thing for the $78 pricing tier and the $58 pricing tier here as well. So if we go back to our homepage here, preview this, you'll notice that we now have a dynamic pricing card that changes not only the price, but the link as well. And just like that, you've learned how to build an interactive and dynamic pricing card inside of Framer. If you enjoyed this video and want more Framer tutorials just like this one, consider subscribing to the channel because we're putting out new Framer content every single week. And if you want to level up your Framer sites even more, go to insertframe.io to check out some amazing Framer plugins. But until next time, I'll catch you later.